And for it to buffer, because sometimes it takes a few seconds to get posted live. Too. Yeah, sometimes with these live <laughs> videos, they kind of go in and out. So it's weird. <laughs> we never really know when is it really going live. So we'll find <laughs> out. Yeah, exactly. So welcome, welcome. We are super excited to have you here. Um, so, Corey, what do we do here? Um, so, first of all, we are Linda's Electric Quilters. Yes. And our biggest thing is we love to provide education mm -hmm. to you on quilting products and sewing products that are in the industry. Yes. So, every Wednesday, every now and then, sometimes we'll take a Wednesday off. Uh -huh. um, we like to show you different products that we carry mm -hmm. and kind of give you more education on them so you know what's going on and you get to do this all from the comfort of your own home. Exactly. So, some of it could be brand new stuff that's right. just come out or some of it could be stuff that's been out for a while and we right. just feel like, you know, it's really good to get a good educational video on that. Right, and it's always good to revamp because if you don't use it, you lose it. That's so right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always good to go back over it again. And I think we're good. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. Hey, so in, in a kind of what we also do here is when we're live, we like to give stuff away. Yes. So to make sure that you can, can qualify to give something, you have to answer into the comment section. Now, we do live giveaways, but we also give away 72 hours later, sometimes 96 hours, just depending on the weekend it is. Right. Um, but they, you have to comment on that video afterwards, right? Right. So once you make that comment, then we pick from um, those comments in mm -hmm. a random drawing, same like we do when it's live. The biggest thing we're running into is we have People lots of unclaimed. claiming their prizes, <laughs> which you would think. Like, I, I'm always down for free <laughs> stuff. Um, so basically what Diana is saying is we do, of course, that live giveaway. <laughs> After the video posts, all those live comments go kind of into a queue, and uh -huh. they just kind of sit there. Yes. We don't have access to run them and comment back to you after the live video is ended. Yep. Mm -hmm. So after that's ended, you would then go back, if you didn't win live, yeah. and enter in in the comment section on the posted video. Uh-huh. Within that 72 to 96 hour time frame, depending on, you know, when we sleep, <laughs> um, make sure you go back and check to see. Also check your email because your, your uh, Google account emails you if we mm -hmm. comment back to you or if anyone does. Yeah. Um, but go back and check and see because we have a couple of unclaimed prizes. <laughs> yeah, quite a few. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, you can still get them. Go check your email. And if you're one of them that won, we have a little pile back there. We so, do. Just kind um, of piling up in my office. Yeah. <laughs> Please claim your prize. <laughs> so anyway. So, so today, what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk about Gross-Beckert needles. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, needles in general, but of course, Gross-Beckert, because those are the ones that we carry, and they're the most popular one yeah. in the long-arm quilting industry. Yeah, so a little history about Gross-Beckert is they've been around since 1852. Yeah. I say yikes. Okay, that sounds bad. 1852. That's a long time. Yeah, so they're they're actually the world-class leader in making needles, and they're out of Germany. Didn't know that was a thing. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they're out of Germany. They're a family-owned and operated business since mm -hmm. 1852, which is also really cool as yeah, well. Yeah, that is cool. Relatable. Yeah. Not since 1852, <laughs> but relatable. <laughs> I don't know. Some days it feels that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so, and some of you will notice that that the way that the needles have changed. So and before they would come in the yellow packaging, which was more of the, the singer type needle. Right. So we're going to kind of go over and show you a little bit of the packaging, come back and go over some more information. Make sure you stay tuned and watch the whole video because we have tons of information to give you. And at the end, There's we have really something cool that you will help you find your needle for your machine. Yes. Okay. Kay. So I'm going to go over here to this camera. Okay. And I'm going to, so right here is the yellow packaging. Now, these were the old type of packaging that the Singer used. Correct. Yeah, they were the Singer needles. They came in that yellow packaging, which people that have been around for a while, uh, those are the ones that they're used to seeing. And recently, I say recently, within the past 10 years, uh, Grossbecker uh, purchased Singer. They bought them out, and they've switched to these green packages. So you'll still see Grossbecker sending out the yellow packaging needles as well, but they've been rebranding their packaging and going to that green pack. Yeah, and phasing that yellow packaging out. Right. Um, and so we're going to talk about how you identify on the packaging and what things mean um, in just a second. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Corey, what are we talking about next real quick? Okay. Um, so we're talking about how the needles themselves are for, at least for, you know, we're speaking at it from a gamble side because we're a gamble dealer. Uh -huh. Always make sure when you're purchasing needles or when you're looking for needles that you're uh, purchasing through them through <laughs> an authorized dealer representative. Yeah. Uh, we've gotten a lot of calls, a lot of questions, a lot of Facebook posts, a lot of Facebook messages. I could keep going <laughs> um, on different needles and what needles to buy and why am I having to skip stitches and I'm having pokies on the back. It's because you're not 
some people were not buying them through a authorized dealer. They were buying them through another third party. Yeah. And they didn't work properly with their machine. Correct. Because every machine has its different type Correct. of needle that we'll use. Now, some will use some of the same needles, but some right. machines some won't. Don't. Yeah. Um, and machines are very picky, as many of you know. Yeah. So you definitely <laughs> want to make sure you are using the right needle for your machine. Right. If you're not, you know, we're going to go over the machine, the needles that are used for the gambles today. But you can check with your manufacturer on what needle brand is used for your machine. Mm -hmm. And then also um, on Grossbecker's website, which we're going to show you how to do that. They have a really cool catalog. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, so oh, oh real quick. Did you know they have... 300 variations of this needle type too of the 134s yeah it's crazy yeah 300 different Th types their catalog in itself <laughs> is insane like there's so much going on yeah so the needles that we're talking about today are the 134 mrs uh -huh. m is in mary r is in robert mm -hmm. now the mr means multi-range yes because when you're doing long arm quilting you're moving the machine in multiple different directions like that so just like that <laughs> so <laughs> you're needing a multi-range needle for that so the 134 is basically kind of like the product code Correct. And then that MR is that designation. Mm -hmm. But that 134, that's where those 300 different variations are. So yeah. it can get really confusing on which one you really actually need. Yeah. So this is Pretty why we're cool. doing this video. Yeah. So, so <laughs> we're doing the um, the MR needles. Mm -hmm. Keep going. All right. So the mo the, like <laughs> you were saying, the MRs are multi-range needles. So some of the advantages to using an MR needle, which, I mean, like the gamma is requiring, but this is good to kind of know the advantages, is it always it has allows for an extremely tight um, hook to s what? What are you looking at me I'm for? Not, I'm just <laughs> looking at this. is interesting. <laughs> the hook to needle ratio, so it allows for that hook to go in there tight because of the scarf that's on right, there, right? It has a much deeper scarf than most standard 134 needles mm -hmm. do. The MRs have a much deeper scarf, so it allows for basically a better timing adjustment. There so you, you go. get that hook a lot closer. So when that hook point comes through, it minimizes and decreases the um, very, very variable variability. Yeah, word. makes it work better. Um, <laughs> first skip but, stitches, basically. Yeah, but so like you're saying, so you have less thread slicing. Right. Right. Exactly. And yeah. then less thread breakage. Yes. Yeah. So that helps with it that. Has a much being higher immunity for skip stitches. That's the word. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> um, yeah. So high productivity thanks to the reduced machine downtime. Right. So that's why a lot of the commercial machines that are in manufacturing use a multi-range needle. Correct. Um, so let's go over and look at some other fun facts of the needles. Okay. So I'm going to go over here to this book so we can kind of point out, Corey, while you kind of go over it. Okay, cool. So Gross Beckard has a really, like we are talking about, they have a ton of information on their website, and we'll go over um, how to find that at the very end. So the first thing that we're looking at when it comes to a multi-range needle is the increase in stability. So these are just a few fun facts. So thanks to the special blade and scarf geometry, the multi-range needle is extremely resistant to bending, which is basically deflection resistant. It gives a very high level of stability overall. Cool. So let's see if we can zoom into these pictures. There we go. There we go. Now we'll move on to the next one. Okay. So the next fun fact is thread protection. The very deep and long shaped scarf allows for a very tight adjustment uh, to the needle, which is like kind of what we were talking about, that hook to needle ratio, which is pretty nifty. All right. And then the next one. Um, another fun fact would be the cross section at the eye center. So when the needle is penetrating the material, it reaches um, its maximum force in this needle area. So it, when that kind of happens, that increases the disproportional um, displacement cross section. I'm using big words. You are. <laughs> the MR needle was designed so that the penetration force in the eye area is less than that of a standard needle, so it's not going to cause that thread breakage as much. Okay, the next one. Um, thread loading. So that's another fun fact. These are the interesting titles. So when you're changing your sewing direction, the sewing thread is pulled over the needle in different directions. During the downward stroke, the needle slides along the tensioned sewing thread, and this can result in a thread twist and consequently a loop. So with having a multi-range, it decreases that by quite a bit. Okay. And then I think we had one more, like a thread pickup or something like that? Yeah, the thread pickup. Um, so the sewing operations for this can sometimes unwind the thread when you're looking at a standard needle. So that you see that unwinding right there. With a multi-range needle, it keeps those threads more tightly woven. So it's easier for the hook to make that proper stitch instead of it looping. Yes, correct. Awesome. So what do we want to show now? Um, I think we should look at point types. Okay, let's go so over to point types. Because <laughs> point types are something we get a lot of questions about. And I think if you want to show them on the package too, where the lettering is for those point types. Okay. Names. Yeah. 
So that's the, we're looking at FG right now. So let me go over here to the FG or ballpoint, and we'll tell you in a little bit why it would be important to use ballpoint. So Diana's got um, some of the packaging there right there, and you can see kind of at that bottom left-hand corner, it's showing those letters. And what that is is that designates the point type for the needle. So this one is showing in FG slash SUK. So okay. what that is basically stating is that it is a ballpoint needle. And with a ballpoint needle, this is a medium ballpoint if it's just FG. So it's a medium ballpoint needle. Okay. And those are going to be used for sweaters, different laces, uh, t-shirt quilts, all sorts of stuff like that. All right. And then let's go to this other one. And we don't, and the FFG, and that's more of going to be for the light ballpoint, the smaller ones, right? Yeah. Uh, an FFG is more of a specialty needle. It's still a ballpoint, but it's more of a specialty one. Uh, it's a super light ballpoint needle but it's only really for smaller needle sizes. So this is a 2.5 needle. It's pretty small. So you would, you, what would you use that for? So probably if you're doing really, really fine knits, right? Yeah, more, more, probably more, a little bit more of a, a fine knit or maybe a little bit of a loosely woven. Like a well. very loosely woven. Yeah, as well, yeah. kind of either or those. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and show what most people use, and that's the sharp. Yeah, so the most common point type you'll see is an R needle, which is a sharp needle. Now with this one, it is a regular round point sharp needle. Uh, and this is what you'll be using for your cotton fabric. I mean, mo mostly everything. I mean, I use an R for quite a bit of things, almost everything besides one. Yeah. And that's still going to be the most common one that's used. Right. Yeah. The sharp needle used. for sure. All right. Let's tell, let's go over a little bit what the, what the packaging means and what they would use. Okay. So if you want to pull over the packaging. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull over a sharp. Okay. Can compare it to another sharp. So let me find the 4.0s real quick. And then we'll go side by side what they are actually are. Okay. So if when we're looking at the packaging, we can start at the top left. Um, the top left is the mat number. That's basically Grossbeckert's item number for the needle. The next three lines of numbering underneath would be the 134 MR, which is the multi-range that we've been looking at. But those are all called designation numbers, all the following three lines, so the DP and the 1955, all those are designation numbers. Underneath that, where it says R or the FFG or FG, those are going to be your point types, so determining what point you have. And then right underneath that is more of a serial number uh, for that lot that was made. Yeah, because so you can have different serial numbers. So even yes. though you see our serial number here for you, the sharp, that doesn't mean that's going to be your serial yeah, number. Yeah, each on one's your a sharp. little different. It's all, <laughs> it's all about when the lot was made. When it was produced, the production. Um, that little 10 in the middle at the top, that's stating how many needles come in the package. And then to the right of that is the needle size. So the one that we're looking at right here These are both 18s, is so. a 110 18. Mm -hmm. Right underneath that is a 4.0. That's the more common name that they go by, which is a 4.0 needle. And if you want to show them, uh, if you want to show them another package that has a different uh, number on it, a different size number, so it's so you can see a different one. Yeah, so if we were looking at these, it would show you that most everything over here. Still the same, 10 in the package, but the size is a 12. Yeah, so it's an 80-12. The one next to it's a 90-14, mm -hmm. uh, 2.5 or 3.0 is what they're more commonly known by. Um, but when you're looking between uh, sharp and ballpoint, the quickest thing to do is look down there. At the bottom left-hand corner. At the bottom left-hand yeah, right corner. Right above that lot serial number. Yeah. Um, at the bottom right-hand corner of the newer packages, you'll see this is a gross Beckert QR code. It's not a common... QR code that you can scan off anything. It's actually used for their app. But what that code does is it allows you to scan it. They do have an app. Um, if you go to the App Store, or the Android Store, and look for Gross Beckert, you can scan that code on your phone through the app, and it will take you to their product information about the package, which I think is pretty cool. So it yeah. tells you about it. So let's tell them why, what needles would they use for kind of what versus, you know, t shirts versus cotton, things like that. Okay. So we were looking at different sizing 
of the needle. So on the on the top right hand corner is where it showed those sizes. Mm -hmm. So we looked at a 2.5. Yes. Okay. So what are we normally using a 2.5 for? Those are going to be like your fine fibers, like silk. Mm -hmm. You know, um, maybe some of your special delicate fabrics, and maybe even like some really fine antique quilts. Right. Um, and you could you could also use a 3.0 for mm -hmm. the antique quilts too. Right. We, when we start jumping into regular fabrics, which are most commonly used, we're going to go to the 3.5 and 4.0s. Yeah, right? 4.0 is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. So the most common one now is the 4.0, which is the size 18. Mm -hmm. um, now, that doesn't mean if you have a bunch of size 16s, so you don't need them. They can, right. they'll, they'll still work good, too. So the, the size 3.5 to 4.0, those are going to be your core sizes to use the different threads out there. Right. Because the threads always tell you what a size needle they recommend too. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're purchasing threads, you can see um, like for Superior's threads. Let's just throw that out there. Yeah. On the front of most of the Superior thread packaging, it says needle re needle size recommendation mm -hmm. 4.0, 3.5. Yeah. And they recommend that because they know that that works well with it. Correct. So it's we always suggest well the same thing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Use what they tell you to use on there. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So yeah. But you know they also have a size. 5.0. So mm -hmm. why would I use such a big needle? Um, if you're going through jeans, so if yeah. you're doing jean stitch, if you're working comforters, really, really thick batting, yeah. you'll want a bigger needle to accomplish that. Because mm -hmm. if, you're if you're using a smaller needle, it's going to cause deflection, which will then give you skip stitches, loops, all sorts of stuff. Would you use that size needle? So say if you're trying to make like luggage tags or maybe sew through some canvas, things like that that are thicker, that would you use a size 5 For sure. too? Yeah. yeah. If okay. anything, uh, anything really a thicker material, yeah. I'll be working through it. Like I've sewn through a yoga mat. Not saying you have to try that at home, <laughs> but when I, I was don't doing know, it turned that, out really cool. It, did, it was pretty cool. Um, I did a 5.0 on that because it's yeah. a thick material. Yeah. So when do you use ballpoints? That's kind of the biggest thing right now on social media is like, when do you use ballpoint versus sharp? So what do we recommend? That doesn't mean that this is what maybe um, you use currently and it works for you, but what we recommend um, for our ga for the gambles, mm -hmm. and then again always go back to what your manufacturer recommends for right. your machine. Right. But for what we recommend for the gamels, what, when would you use that? The only time I've ever used the ballpoint is for a t-shirt quilt. Okay. Okay. And I know there's some controversy <laughs> out there about that, whether or not just use a sharp and be done with it or use a ballpoint needle. Uh, I'll be using a ballpoint needle due to the fact that it is, has that rounded tip mm -hmm. and it's basically separating the fibers of that knitted fabric. Cause a t-shirt is a knitted fabric. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so it's separating those fibers as opposed to just slicing right through them. Yeah. Cause on the sharp, if it's going straight through the knit, it, it, it's slicing through the knit, right? Right. It for those loosely woven for the ones. Loosely for a woven much ones. tighter woven fabric, it's not a problem. But when you're doing a t-shirt quilt, you never know what brand t-shirt right. that they have in there. Right. So we totally recommend ballpoint needles for t-shirt quilts, even if you have cotton on the bottom. Yes. Because you're going through those fibers. and um, You're going through those fibers on the top, and then yeah. cotton on the bottom, bottom is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another question that we get, anytime you're looking at skip stitches, mm -hmm. thread breaks, mm -hmm. pokies on the back, batting mm -hmm. pokies out of yes. the back, that's a big one. Uh -huh. It really always... 99% of the time comes down to your needle. Comes down to your needle, yep. 98% of the time <laughs> comes down to your needle. So if you're getting pokies on the back, uh -huh. you might accidentally be using a ballpoint needle and with cotton fabrics yes. and not even knowing it. And that's what causes that. That ballpoint needle pushes all of that through that fabric, even though it's a tightly woven one, uh -huh. and puts those pokies on the back, whereas a sharp needle goes right through it all. Yep. So when I'm using regular cotton fabrics, sharp needle all day long. Yeah. If I'm doing uh, t-shirt quilts and knit quilts, fabrics that I don't want to poke through, break the fabric, ballpoint right, needle. Right, you don't want to pierce the, pierce the fabric the like that, yeah. Yeah, so you're just going to have to have a couple different packages on hand and then switch them out. So if you um, are using titanium needles, you're yes. using ballpoint needles. Titanium needles, all currently what Gross Beckert sells currently at this time of filming, mm -hmm. um, only thing that Gross Beckert sells titanium-wise is a ballpoint needle. Yeah. So we get a lot of calls saying I'm getting pokies on the back of my quilt. Mm -hmm. well, I've tried out these new titanium needles that everyone says is amazing, which they are great, needles, great needles, don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you're using that ballpoint needle, it's going to cause that happen. It's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. yeah. It's it's more likely to cause it. Yeah. Maybe not Much every time, likely. but Much it is more, li likely. more likely to cause it. So right. definitely check. Right. All right. So what else? You uh, we're we just were throwing a lot of information out. Y'all still the how y'all feeling? How I you know. good? You good? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any questions over there, Brooke? Okay. Well, if you guys are thinking of questions, definitely pop them in there. Yes. Um, Let's show them the website. Yeah, I really want to show you all their digital product catalog. It it's is cool. really cool. Yeah. Um, so the link is in the description below. Okay. okay? And so we're going to do this off of your phone. Cool. So what we're going to do is I went to the Gross Beckert website. Let me turn this around. 
so we can see. So I, I've gone to the Gross Beckert website, and like I said, the link for this is down in the description below. Um, but you can go to their digital digital product catalog, and let's say we want to look at a where'd you put them at? Here we go. We want to look at more information about this 4.0 needle and see if we can learn more about it. So the top left of that was that mat number that we talked about, uh, the product number for them. So in here, I can enter in that number. So I'm going to move that over to the side. And in the products catalog, I can type in that number. So let me go here. And it's 7763262. Yep. And I can search for it. And what that's going to do is bring up the information about that needle. So I can tap on details. And this is when it gets really cool. Zoom out. So the first thing it's going to show you is a picture of the needle. But if you go over to the right hand side, there it is. If you go over to the right hand side, it's going to tell you the point style, which is the sharp, needle size, what it's coated with, the length butt to eye, the shank diameter. You can scroll down and you can see the benefits of using a multi-range needle with multi-directional function, the special features, what the advantages are, different product images, the point style. It'll also show you somewhere right here. Shows you kind of what the stitching is going to look like using that point, how big the holes are going to be, and different things like that, what kind of fabrics to look for that you're using, and whatnot. But it's a really, really, I don't know why, but I just think that's really interesting. No, I love how they have so much information. So if you're ever trying to figure out what needle is supposed to be used for my machine or what application I should be using that needle for, mm -hmm. they have tons of information there for you. Yeah, I think... My, I don't know why, but I'm just really fascinated with just seeing the needle up close. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. But then just learning more and more about it. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, Brooke, do we have any questions? The 5.0. Right. I always forget I have to repeat the question. Repeat the they can't hear Brooke. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we've been asked what type of needle that you would use to uh, quilt through leather. Mm -hmm. And our suggestion would be a 5.0. Uh, we do sell 4.5. Or 4.5, uh, yeah. I guess it really depends on how thick the it leather is, yeah, right? I've done a, a thin faux leather, and a 4.0 worked fine for that. Okay. But if you're getting more of a thicker thick leather. leather, you're going to want to go up in needle size, so probably a 5.0. Yeah, because sometimes when we're sewing through some of that thick leather, we might be using really thick thread for that uh, kind Correct. of that upholstery, upholstery look. Right. So, okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Brooke, you good? She's oh. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> All righty. So perfect. Well, we are still here, so you can definitely ask questions, and we'll come back and answer those questions. Um, we knew we we know we just threw a lot at you. We are um, we just get so excited about some of the products sometimes that we just give a lot of information. So hopefully, you have learned something. If you if you got confused, uh, just hit rewind <laughs> and, or backspace or whatever and watch it again. Um, so we're super excited about being able to offer this um, information to you when we can. Do you have another question? Good question. So the question was, are the sizes the same in both the ballpoint and the sharp needles? Yes, they are. Yeah. Now, no. and, and there will be some ballpoints that are not available in a certain yes. size during certain times, but Correct. they do mean the same thing. Yes. So if I'm needing a size um, 18, 4.0, and a sharp, I normally would use that, and the thread's calling for a size 18, and I, I'm using a t-shirt quilt, they have 4.0 ballpoint as well. Okay, yeah, I just thought that. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> so, yes, so yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Brooke? Oh, good question. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, the question was, what is the best size for batiks? For me... Um, I like a 4.0 still. Yeah. That's kind of my go-to. Some of us will go down to a 3.5 to have a little bit of a smaller needle hole. Yeah. Um, but my 4.0 is my go-to unless I have to do a t-shirt quilt. You know, I, I always just I say, quilt, yeah, yeah <laughs> kind of go back to your thread recommendation if you're using basic stuff. Yeah. You know, so if the thread recommends the 4.0 and I'm still using cotton, mm -hmm. then um, like you said, that some people will go to the smaller sizes for to have the hole a little smaller, but a 4.0 works as well. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now we get to give away stuff. Oh, yeah. You want to go and give away stuff, and then I'll show them one more thing yeah. while you're okay. tallying up the votes. Okay. So we are going to give away three packages of needles. Yeah. So okay. We have five total, three today live. So we'll have three winners today. And um, let me – we got the little drawing Where'd thing. Where'd the bunny go? Oh, it's right oh. over there. Bunny hopped away. 
Yep. So um, our question is going to be, we're going to draw the uh, numbers, but our question is going to be, so wait to answer, is what does the MR mean? Now, we said what MR means tons of times. Quite a bit of times. <laughs> Quite a so, few times. Um, so let's draw. Kay. So let's do three. We've got three winners. So, yeah, so we're going to have three. So number, number 10. Number 10. Number 15. 15. And number 9. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Big numbers. 9, Kay. 10, and 15. What does MR mean? And Diana is going to go over with Brooke and tally up those answers. So make sure you're entering them in the comment section. And while she's doing that, I thought it'd be really cool to show you one more thing over here. So Brooke, you want to switch cameras for me, please? Yes, so I'm over here and I have a, a micro lens put on so you could see that if you ever drop your needle out of your package and you really want to know what it is, the gross packer needles are all engraved at the top of them. You can see it has a rounded point. I'm trying to find it. Sorry. They're all engraved. So this one says GB, which is Gross Becker, and then MR, multi range, 5.0. So bring out your magnifying glasses, and you can see all that. So that one's a 5. Let's go with this one is. Here's another one. So this is a 4.5. But it all says that right there. Oh, I'm just dropping stuff. That's a better hold. There we go. Almost got them counted up. So that one says GBMR 4.5. And here's a closer look at when Diana and I were talking about the scarf. So that has a much deeper concave right here. Caves in. So it allows it to catch that thread better and have a better hook to needle scarf ratio. Just like that. All right, I had to do my double check since we had three of them. Those went fast. So um, so we have our winners. So Kay. congratulations to uh, D. Lynn A. Ooh. And then we have Margaret J. Kay. And then Diane S. Awesome. So um, I guess, well, there's so many people. Should I say their last names? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I okay. guess your guys are all watching on there. <laughs> um, anyway, so Delane Anderson, Margaret um I, I didn't write the last name down. Jay right, and Diane right. Smith. <laughs> anyway. If you are those winners, make sure you, first of all, congratulations, congratulations. But make sure you contact us due to YouTube's privacy settings. We cannot contact you. So you can call us at 972-542-4000 to claim your prize. Yes. And don't forget, if you didn't, you weren't one of those three, we still are giving two more packages away. Um, just wait for this video to post in a few minutes. Go on there and answer again. Um, and then we'll be giving two more away. Awesome. Yes. Sounds Yay. good to me. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today and learning a little bit more about the gross Becker needles. Mm -hmm. I know we threw a lot of information at you, but yeah. we really wanted you to understand what everything meant on that package so you can make an informed decision when you are purchasing them. Always make sure that you subscribe to our channel right down there at the bottom right-hand corner. Yes. And share it with your friends. Uh, once you hit that subscribe button, the little bell will appear. Click on that little bell so you can get notified whenever we go live or whenever we post other educational videos. Yep. From all of us here at Linda's Electric Quilters, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.